Ah, uh, that is a Maybell. Hi, I'm Mike. Uh, a Maybell uh, tenor banjo. Let me let me get the tuner off. Uh, I was like so happy to do this video because uh, I was bragging on this and how great it was in tune. And I just had to change the A string. So it's like I need to buy like 40 A strings because it's the only thing I ever break. I'm not the greatest demonstrator, but anyway, I picked this thing up for well under $200 at Elderly Instruments in East Lansing. That's the mecca for so many people across the world to, to go to that. Let me try to kind of curl this guy up a little bit here so it's not so much in the way. I don't have my, my little wire snipper, so otherwise I, I'll, I will take this off later, but right now kind of do it that way. So, um, But anyway, it's not marked, but it is a Slingerland Maybell. And it's got some nice work on the inlay there. Usually, a lot of times, I've noticed that the Slingerland Maybells tend to come with this Grover non-slip little uh, piece that I like. It's also got a Waverly uh, tail piece on it. Uh, pretty easy to deal with. And, of course, it's 1920s, so it's uh, post and dowel, which, uh, you know, if you ever have a problem with it, of course, costs lots and lots of money to, to fix. So a $200 banjo, if it needs a neck adjustment really badly, can run into $400 or $600 or something. But, but it, it, I, it does have some issues with the neck. The, the fingerboard is, is actually was listed by elderly as pear wood. And I, from what I read, a lot of times what they did is they took pear wood and then dyed it to make it kind of look like a sort of like a faux ebony. Um, it's not as nice as ebony, but I like it. Uh, it's, it's close. It's close. It's got a, got a nice feel to it. It's got a nice feel to it and, uh, and it plays well. Um, the, uh, posting on it, the sales blurb said it had a little bit of a back bow to it and I can kind of see it, but it doesn't seem to be a problem in playing. The one thing that I didn't mention is this is 17 frets, not 19. So usually, you know, you'd see that as sort of a tenor uh, for Irish Celtic sort of stuff. But um, I'm using it as a jazz banjo. So close as I can right now, tune it. Um, so you've got C, G, um, D, and A. And that A is kind of standing there. It's friction tuners. Um, three-piece neck, the center piece down there, and then the other two sides. So the neck is relatively stable, which is important because you had, back in that time you have no truss rod for, for these. But uh, And a tone ring. That's the big deal with this. It's got a tone ring on it. So, um, it, it, so well, my main thing here is just to kind of let you hear what it sounds like playing the same song here. On, on tender banjo, but I like this. It's it's a, it's a lot of fun. And, and here's the thing I was uh, trying to say is that if you uh, find yourself wanting to get a, um, uh, a get into tenor banjo, go ahead and look for these old um, Slingerland Maybell uh, banjos because they're actually very nice. Um, they usually don't. You can find them like between one fifty and three hundred dollars and and play it you know and if it's playable get it you know if it's going to need a lot of work I, I promise you you're going to be into another two to three hundred dollars just to get it straightened out at the very least but if it's a serviceable it's got a head on it um the neck isn't too bad uh, you know like i said this one came under two hundred dollars uh there, it's so much better than finding like an old the old harmony or the old k's that have no tone rings and they're just 
uh, you know, they got the guitar tuners on, I think they're just miserable, you know, and um, you'll definitely be disappointed in that. You'll pay 100 to 200 for one of those these days. So so try to find yourself a, an older Maybell or, or sometimes a Ludwig, you can, you can find one. But the, the Maybell with the tone ring is, is really nice because it'll give you a better little sound. The other thing is that don't worry if all you find, like me, was the 17 fret. Um, you can still tune that in jazz tuning. Um, if that's that's what you're uh, doing, and uh, and it'll be fine. As a matter of fact, I think it's actually punchier, and though though it doesn't show up on my video, I don't. I just have this like big. Anytime I play in front of the camera, I just like everything is ramped up, and I get much more tense, and and you know have problems being loose with it. So, but when I'm playing on this, and I don't have to perform, I I find myself being able to do. myself without a camera on it. I've got to set up like a hidden camera, I guess. Uh, I, I can make it sound a little bit better. And I feel for some reason, I don't know, the, the shorter neck is helping me a little bit with uh, the technique. It's, it's snappier. It's livelier. I've been thinking about putting a 19 fret neck on this. And I'm starting to think, you know what? No. I... I might just leave it this way. take on it. The other thing, I have another video for this other one, is that if you if you can't find one of these, and I realize, I, I, there, there were a lot of them made, so you should be able to find one, but um, you know, the, the fact that they're cheap is also an indication that you should be able to find one. Uh, you know, because this, this was not an upper level banjo, but it was an upgrade. It, you know, it also has, like, it, these are not dots, these are, these are little um, on the, on the, uh, on the fretboard, those are like um, little diamonds there, and I don't know, they might be pressed on or something, I, I, I'm not sure, but the, but certainly the work in the headstock is 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 relatively nice. Um, and um, the, the edge work on this, um, not fancy by any means, but it's a, it's a beautiful looking little little banjo. Uh, it said that this one was refinished, so the one you, ones you find might be darker, but anyway, what I was saying is that if you, if you can go with something with a tone ring, that's great. If you can't, um, really check out the Rover, uh, Sega Instruments has the Rover RB20T. If you're into Plectrum, the RB20P. But I'm telling you, those things sell out as soon as they hit. They're very, very hard to find. But they, they go for about 220 or 230. They're brand new. They have no tone ring, but they have this little composite rim, and it's actually, I did a video on it, so you can look for that as well. It's actually a really, really nice tenor banjo that is so lightweight. Now, I mean, I literally keep it, you know, right by the side of my bed. I just pick it up anytime I want uh, and play it. And um, so the, uh, the Rover RB20T, uh, you can find it on Elderly, you can find it on a lot of other uh, musical sites. Um, I highly recommend that one if you don't want to go looking for these. But if you want something that's going to be a little bit nicer, a little bit punchier, don't worry that 17 fret.
Okay, so like I said, I'm not the greatest demonstrator uh, right now. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Slingerland, Maybell, um, nice little, nice, nice little, uh, nice little uh, uh, tenor banjo. Um, and, um, you know, try to play it, you know, or if you're gonna mail order, make sure they have a return policy because when you get it and it, if it won't tune or whatever, um, uh, but these were nice. They were, it's got that three piece neck. So, you know, it shouldn't go too, uh, weird on you in that. And a lot of times when you get these, you find out that people replace the friction tuners. I kind of wish they would have replaced the friction tuners. Um, but, uh, anyway, yeah, they're, they're very nice. Probably said that 15 different times.